U.S. Saudi ties have worsened due to Saudi Arabia's and Russia's agreement to reduce oil output as part of OPEC+. Plus. Now the Biden administration has promised a methodical response to what it views as a blatant snub in Moscow's complicity. But there have been calls from both Democrats and Republicans in Congress to end the country's security support to Saudi Arabia and Riyadh claims it was motivated only by economic self-interest. Now Saudi Arabia threatens the U.S. and forms a new partnership with Russia and China to shut down the entire U.S. economy. So what does this mean for U.S. and the world? What's up everyone? Before we talk about this big news, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to Tech Revolution. So if you're ready, then let's begin. Joe Biden visited Saudi Arabia in July when he shook hands with the country's crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. And as a presidential candidate, Joe Biden had campaigned to make Saudi Arabia an outcast for its human rights violations and seven-year war in Yemen. However, he had to put his ideals aside in favor of politics in the face of a deadly global pandemic and Russia's aggressive invasion of Ukraine. Biden wanted an increase in Saudi oil output to bring down gas costs for Americans. And because of this, he swallowed his pride and began to pay the crown prince respect due to a future global leader. Now, the awkward fist bump photo op has backfired spectacularly for Biden. You see, it was agreed upon in October by the Saudi-led OPEC Plus energy cartel to reduce oil output by 2 million barrels per day. And as a result, the price of gasoline and other fuels will rise this autumn and winter. The Biden administration spent a great deal of political capital in the last days before the vote and it attempted to prevent Saudi Arabia and its partners from reducing output. Biden's courtship of Prince Mohammed then resulted in a 2% drop in global oil production at best. So just one month before the U.S. midterm elections, the prince has already caused political harm to the Biden administration. Now, it's no news that China is now Saudi Arabia's top consumer for oil. In fact, China has eclipsed the United States in recent years. And in 2020, Saudi Arabia is projected to earn $95.7 billion from oil exports. In contrast to China's $24.7 billion in imports, the United States only spent $6.59 billion on Chinese goods. In 2021, the Belt and Road Initiative saw Chinese investment in Saudi Arabia exceed $43.47 billion. Now, Saudi Arabia's government is investing in Chinese companies, and the value of the contract between Aramco and Chinese oil businesses is estimated at $10 billion. In the United States, petrol prices dropped almost three months after reaching $5 per gallon in June. Now they're on the rise again, with an average October increase of 12 cents a gallon, bringing the price to $3.92. The Democratic Party's chances of keeping control of Congress after the November elections are being hampered by rising costs. Unsurprisingly, the prince and his Gulf allies favored working with Trump and his lenient Republican government. And in exchange for steady oil prices and multi-billion dollar armament purchases, he also granted Prince Mohammed a blank check. The Saudis took Russia's Vladimir Putin's side in this dispute, and to continue his attack on Ukraine, Putin needs oil prices to rise. Now the United States and the European Union want to limit how much money they pay Russia for oil as part of their economic sanctions on Moscow. However, with rising energy costs worldwide, that plan may fail. Europe is entering a winter season where heating prices are predicted to skyrocket because of the conflict in Ukraine. Furthermore, Prince Mohammed may have shown his power over the international oil market by outwitting Biden. However, his power play irritated Washington's diplomatic corps. Those who call themselves realists in foreign policy but have dismissed progressive criticisms of the U.S.-Saudi cooperation for years must now face an awkward question. What benefit does Washington receive from decades of backing the House of Saud if it cannot rely on a reliable oil supply? You see, when it comes to formal alliances, the United States and Saudi Arabia are not allies. In fact, they have never agreed to a mutual defense pact or formal treaty. And U.S.-Saudi ties have been primarily business-like for decades. 
The Saudis utilized their influence inside OPEC and the expanded OPEC Plus cartel to maintain output and prices at levels acceptable to the United States government. And although the United States still imports some oil from Saudi Arabia, the amount is far less smaller than it was in the past. This is because Washington is the greatest oil producer on the planet. The U.S. government has backed the House of Saud politically in exchange for their continued cooperation in keeping oil flowing to the world, and they made billions off of selling it high-tech American armaments. They also helped out militarily whenever hostile neighbors made an attack on the kingdom. In 1990, the Iraqi tyrant Saddam Hussein launched an invasion of the neighboring country of Kuwait. And the United States government responded by sending half a million troops to Saudi Arabia, who was afraid that Hussein would make it his next target. Moreover, the United States still sends hundreds of troops and advisors to Saudi Arabia to help train the Saudi military. It also assists the country in using American weapons like sophisticated aircraft and helicopters and the Patriot anti-missile system. Now, this arrangement of oil for security has survived both Democratic and Republican administrations. There were several crises throughout the 1970s, including OPEC's Arab-led oil embargo and price hikes. Also covered are the years following the September 11, 2001 terrorist attack in New York and Washington, D.C., in which 15 of the 19 hijackers were Saudi nationals recruited by Al-Qaeda. But now Prince Mohammed has thrown a wrench into that decades-old way of thinking. To make matters worse, he timed that choice to maximize Biden's shame and the next crucial elections for the House of Representatives are happening right now. Washington and its allies are presently striving to present a unified front against Russian aggression. And without a strong response from Biden, the crown prince may feel encouraged to take even more chances. President Biden has threatened the Saudis with repercussions but has not been specific about those consequences. In addition, there was growing reluctance among Democrats in Congress, especially moderates, to end the alliance. And the urge for action comes despite the kingdom's appalling human rights record. Senator Bob Menendez, the Democratic chair of the Influential Foreign Relations Committee, called a complete halt to all areas of our collaboration with Saudi Arabia on October 10th. Even more alarmingly, he pledged to prevent any more U.S. military exports. A fellow centrist and the Senate's number two Democrat, Senator Dick Durbin, was even more critical. In a series of tweets, he claimed that the Saudi royal family has never been an honest partner of the United States. He also said that the U.S. government's foreign policy should include the possibility of a future without their relationship. But before the infamous fist bump, Biden had already indicated to Prince Mohammed that he intended to continue doing business as usual with the Saudi monarch. Now, the summary report that Biden had promised to produce during the campaign was published in February 2021, and it concerned the finding by the United States intelligence community over Jamal Khashoggi's murder. As stated in the article, Prince Mohammed authorized the murder in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul last October. However, President Joe Biden opted against sanctioning the crown prince out of concern for the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia. Biden persuaded Prince Mohammed that he was too strong to be punished. And there was a point when Biden's staff believed that restricting the prince's ability to travel to the United States or attacking his riches would do nothing to achieve their goals. But the United States' failure to respond with even token penalties certainly encouraged the prince to challenge the foundation of the U.S.-Saudi alliance. Prince Mohammed reasoned that he could get away with maintaining high oil prices. Also, he's undercutting the effort by the U.S. and E.U. to cut off communication with Russia. And the United States continued to provide him with security and military aid. This is because Biden still defends the United States' decades-long strategy of supporting the House of Saud. Analysts think real politics has won out over U.S. values of defending human rights and democracy over despotism. So Biden no longer has to choose between the two. And experts believe that Biden should finally admit that his ostensibly objective approach to Saudi Arabia has been fruitless. Additionally, they argue that Biden should scrap the oil for security agreement. So what do you think of the U.S. should do in response to Saudi Arabia's threats? 
Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching till the end. Before you go, make sure to like and subscribe and click the notification bell to trigger YouTube's algorithm and see more of our videos on your homepage. Thanks for watching and see you next time for more interesting videos like this.